Ever wondered what the Romans had in common with your sushi-loving friend? The answer is a fascinating tale of culinary preferences that transcends the borders of both time and geography. What could possibly bridge the gap between the ancient Romans, renowned for their lavish feasts, and the Japanese famous for their uh, delicate sushi? The answer lies in a shared love for fish sauce. Yes, you heard it right, fish sauce. Wander into the lanes of history, and it is in the intricacies of Roman cuisine that we stumble upon a striking similarity with the contemporary Asian palates. It's not about the legions or the togas or the Colosseums, but something that graced every Roman dining table a flavor enhancer called garum. Garum, an ancient Roman fish sauce, played as crucial a role in the culinary sphere then as soy sauce does today in numerous Asian dishes. Picture this. The Romans, in their elaborate feasts, relishing dishes seasoned with garum just as your sushi-loving friend enjoys a side of soy sauce with his sushi platter. But what exactly is this garum we keep referring to? In essence, garum is a fermented fish sauce, a tangy, umami-rich concoction with a reputation that reached far beyond the confines of Rome. It was as common in the vast expanse of ancient Rome as ketchup is in the bustling cities of modern America. A splash here, a dash there, and garum would transform even the simplest of dishes into marvels of Roman gastronomy. The Roman fish sauce was quite versatile as it served multiple purposes in world. It was not just a mere addition to food, but rather a significant element, a cornerstone of Roman cuisine. Much like how ketchup or mayonnaise serve as constant companions to fries and burgers today, garum was the quintessential companion to a multitude of Roman dishes. It was used as a seasoning, effortlessly enhancing the flavors of the food. It was a condiment, the perfect accompaniment to any meal, lending it an extra layer of taste. But the scope of garum extended beyond just flavoring food. The ancient Romans even believed it to be a cure for various ailments. Yes, you read that right. A fish sauce that also served as a remedy. From aiding digestion to treating infections, garum was believed to have its place in the Roman medicinal world as well. Interestingly, garum might not even be a purely Roman invention. It is said to have originated from the Greeks, who named it garos. The Greeks, known for their immense contribution to philosophy, arts, and science, also brought this culinary gem into the world. From Greece, it traversed the Mediterranean and found its way into the heart of Roman culture. In a way, garum is a testament to the universal language of food, how it bridges cultures and survives the tides of time. It's a symbolic connection between the sushi-loving friend of yours and the Romans of antiquity. Isn't it interesting how food connects us all in ways we sometimes don't even realize? That's the magic of gastronomy. It's believed to have originated from the Greeks, who called it garos. How was garum made, you ask? To answer that, let us journey back to the heart of the ancient Roman Empire, to a time of grand feasts and culinary innovation. Picture an era where fish, specifically mackerel, played a vital role in their cuisine. The method of transforming this humble fish into the treasured sauce known as garum was more than a mere recipe. It was a ritual, an art passed down through generations of Romans. To understand the process, we must first consider the mackerel, a fish possessed of an intrinsic, robust flavor. The Romans, with their refined palate, chose this fish for its strong flavor profile that could withstand the process of fermentation. But they didn't use the whole fish, no. They focused on the intestines, the part which contained a wealth of flavors that were unlocked through the fermentation process. The intestines were carefully extracted, cleaned, and prepared. They were then layered meticulously into a vessel, a container, not unlike the amphoras that littered the Roman landscape. There was method in this madness, with each layer arranged in a particular sequence. The first layer was always a natural preserver, and the next, the mackerel intestines, this layering was repeated until the vessel was filled, creating a veritable lasagna of fish and salt. This vessel, now brimming with the potential of garum, was then left out in the open under the unforgiving Mediterranean sun. The heat worked in tandem with the salt to start the process of fermentation. This was not a quick affair, it took time and a careful eye to ensure the perfect conditions. The vessel would sit there for several weeks or even months, each passing day enhancing the depth and complexity of the emerging sauce. After the fermentation period ended, the mixture was strained to separate the solid remnants from the liquid. The result was an intensely flavored, potent and salty concoction, a nascent form of garum. 
This liquid was the base of many Roman dishes, lending its unique taste to their food adding a depth of flavor that was hard to replicate. Undeniably, the finest garum was garum sociorum. This was a special breed of garum made with not just the intestines, but also the blood and innards of the prized mackerel. The inclusion of these additional components elevated the sauce to a higher level, making it a luxurious commodity. This precious variant was often reserved for the elite class. On the other hand, the common people had their own version of garum. Unable to afford the luxury of garum sociorum, they made do with a less expensive but still flavorful version. This was made from the leftovers of the fish, ensuring that no part of the mackerel went to waste. Even in its simplicity, the common garum was a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Romans. This exotic sauce was often reserved for the elite class, while the common people made do with a less expensive version made from the leftovers of the fish. Fast forward to today, garum isn't a household name anymore, yet it's an ingredient that carries with it the weight of centuries, a taste that has lingered through the annals of time. It's a condiment that once held a prominent place in the kitchens of ancient Rome, a prized element that was considered a culinary treasure. Despite its anonymity in the present times, the legacy of garum is far from forgotten. Now it has become a symbol of culinary history, a relic that is cherished by those who value the art of cooking. If you're a food enthusiast, a gastronome with an appreciation for the chronicles of our edible past, the concept of making your own garum at home might be intriguing. It's an endeavor that requires patience and an open mind, an understanding of the art of fermentation, and an acceptance of the peculiarities of its process. It's an art that involves letting fish ferment until it reaches a state of perfect decay, a state where it transforms into a sauce so potent and flavorful in a league of its own. The modern kitchen may not be accustomed to the idea of fermenting fish, and if you find yourself hesitant, there's no need to worry. The beauty of garum lies in its flexibility, its ability to be replaced with a modern-day substitute. You can resort to the use of fish sauce, a popular ingredient in Asian cooking, or Worcestershire sauce known for its complex flavor profile. Either way, you can still experience the essence of garum, the magical transformation it imparts to any dish it graces. Now imagine yourself preparing a meal, a juicy chicken that's waiting to be marinated. Picture yourself pouring the garum over it watching as the thick savory sauce seeps into the tender meat. The umami-rich garum works its magic, permeating every fiber of the chicken, imparting a depth of flavor so intense it transcends the boundaries of your palate. It's a taste that's hard to put into words, a sensation that leaves an imprint on your taste buds, a memory that's impossible to forget. The act of cooking with garum is more than just a culinary experience. It's like stepping into a time machine, journeying back to an era where garum was a culinary staple. It gives us a chance to taste the flavors that once delighted the palates of ancient Romans, to relive a part of history that has largely been forgotten. So, the next time you find yourself in the kitchen, looking for an ingredient that can add a spark of uniqueness to your dish, consider giving garum a try. Whether you decide to make it from scratch, embracing the ancient art of fermentation, or you choose to use a modern-day substitute, remember that you're not just adding a condiment, you're adding a touch of history, a flavor that has stood the test of time, a connection to a culinary heritage that spans millennia. So next time you're in the kitchen, why not give garum a try? Whether you make it from scratch or use a modern-day substitute, it's a unique way to add a touch of history to your meals. If you've enjoyed this journey through time and flavor, why not share it with others? Today we've investigated the rich food heritage, spotlighting garum, an ancient seasoning, and its modern counterparts. Its use has lessened over time, but its essence remains in many contemporary recipes, delivering a distinct taste. Don't hesitate to share your culinary adventures with garum in the comments section below. We encourage open dialogue and exchange of ideas about the art of cooking. To join our growing community, simply hit like and subscribe to our channel. You won't just be subscribing to cooking videos, you'll join a community of food enthusiasts who love discussing culinary arts. Indeed, food isn't just about sustenance, it is an artistic expression, a heritage passed through generations, a celebration of culture and traditions. It is a language that transcends geographical boundaries and brings people together. And most importantly, it's a delicious way to connect with our past.